Hey guys, we are over at the Harmon booth at Cedia 2019. This is always one of my favorite booths. I love the brands behind Harmon. I love the science behind Harmon. These are good guys. They keep the realness in audio. They've given so much to the industry and education and we've learned so much from them. Um, some of your scientists and engineers have helped us measure loudspeakers more accurately. Can't thank you guys enough. We just recently intro, uh, reviewed this little beryllium speaker here, the model 126 BE. Incredible sounding speaker, incredible measurements. In fact, our reviewer said that this is basically about as good as you can get in a, in a form factor like this, a two-way design that's passive. So I'm gonna turn this over to Jim Garrett. Jim Garrett knows Harman products really well. I want him to go over some of the new models that are in the Revell line. So Jim, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, how are you? Oh good, I'm gonna hand this over to you now. Perfect, all right, thanks. So again, my name is Jim Garrett. I'm the Senior Director of Product Strategy and Planning for Harman's Luxury Audio Group. So here at Cedia 2019, we are showcasing three new models that are expansion to the Revel Performa Beryllium range. So the first one we actually did a preview of last week at Rocky Mountain. The F226, you can see here, is a size in between the existing F228 and the M126BE. These two speakers have been out for about a year and have done incredibly well for us, won a number of awards. A lot of people that really like the sound of the 228 wanted something a little bit smaller, so the F226BE does exactly that. This is the same one inch beryllium uh, tweeter, as well as our cast aluminum ceramic coated acoustic lens waveguide. That's the same as the 228. This five and a quarter inch deep ceramic composite cone mid-range is the same as what's in the 228. What we get though is instead of the dual eights, we get dual sixes. So this gives us a much smaller form factor in this product. Literally takes up about the same amount of space as what the M126 does on its floor stand. So this is a model, uh, it slots in between. We're at 4,000 a pair here, 7,000 a pair for the 226, and then 10,000 a pair for the 228. And this guy's uh, in production right now, will be available in uh, October on that one. So, so how many finish options do you have? Because I see three, fin four finishes here, right? Yeah, so the, the, the standard uh, Performa Beryllium, there's four finish options on it. And we've got all of them here. So there's uh, Piano Gloss Black. There's our Metallic Silver that's shown here. We have Gloss White as a Piano White finish. And then the 228 here is shown in a Gloss Walnut finish on that. Now, there is a fifth color that's shown up here right now. Uh, and this is a completely new model that's being shown for the first time here at Cedia. This will now become the flagship for the Performa Beryllium range. This model is called the F328BE. And it not only is a larger version of the floor standard, but it's got some new technology in it as well. So that one inch beryllium tweeter that's at the top of that speaker is a new design. Mark Glazier, who's the chief engineer behind all these Revel products, has been working on that uh, new tweeter. Much more capable even than what's in the 228. Larger motor, vented pole piece, a lot of things he's done to improve that tweeter design. The waveguide itself, you notice, is even a little bit bigger, but that's a sixth generation waveguide. And it's evolution changes but what he's looking to do is improve the transition from the waveguide to the baffle and that's the primary difference that you'll see on the 328 model over there so the tweeters all new the waveguides new the mid-range is the same we've got triple eight inch woofers instead of the dual eights in here and again marks made some evolutionary changes to the motor structure so on them is the base alignment different because i see a port in front of this model but i don't see it here yeah this guy is actually ported so it's got dual rear ports on it the reason we did that is because of the height with the third uh, woofer on the front of it was pushing the tweeter up higher than we really wanted to have it so we moved the ports around so it's still a base reflex design dual rear firing ports uh, they actually look uh, pretty cool on the back of it so if i can spin it around real quick for you here hold that for you thank you so guys if you have a ferrari this seems like it'll match the color of it <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, so we just moved the ports around to the rear of the speaker on this one. So why do the ports stick out so far? What's behind that? Uh, so, of course, we needed a flared exit on the back of the ports, right, to keep the noise and turbulence down on this. But, of course, with a rounded back speaker, there's not a good transition for that to have that exit that we needed onto this rounded back. So we went ahead and let the ports stick out of the back a little bit so we could get the complete 
finish of the flare that we needed, and then we just trimmed them off to fit onto the curvature of the back of the cabinet. This looks really slick. So the question I have for you now is you got this giant tower here. Two questions I actually have. How close in performance is it to your flagship Salon 2? And do you have a center channel now that'll match the output of this for big systems? Yeah, two great questions. So in terms of performance, so we're still finalizing this design right now, so that's why we're showing it static here at the show. Uh, but performance expectation, of course, based on the rest of these, this thing's gonna be stellar. Uh, we expect nothing less. And in fact, we're actually gonna replace the smaller floor stander in the Ultima 2 range, so the Studio 2 will go away and the F328 takes its place. It takes its place at a price point as well. These are gonna be 16,000 a pair. Uh, so if you go back, the Salon is still our flagship floor stander. It's been in the market for some time. One of the reasons it has is it's difficult to design a speaker that's better than it. This is gonna run right up against it. Obviously the one core difference that you'll see between us and the Ultimas is we don't have the sculpted baffle that we have. Uh, so this is a, more of a flat baffle, but the waveguide geometry on this is light years ahead of what's on the Salon tweeter. Very similar design to what's in there with the one inch beryllium dome. So this will be great. So yes, while these have been fantastic and we know that people love these for music, there has been a lot of requests to have a center channel for this product as well. So we are showing here at Cedia uh, the, the granddaddy of Revel center channels. This is the C426BE. And this uses the same one inch beryllium dome tweeter. It's got the cast aluminum ceramic coated waveguide, just like the 228, the 226, the M126. Is it the same tweeter as the 228 or the new It's the same tweeter as the 228. Okay. The 328 is the only model that has that flagship uh, tweeter in it. This uses quad six and a half inch woofers. Base alignment on this, it is a base reflex design with dual rear firing ports. And we include the port plugs because obviously depending on where you place this thing, you're going to want to change that up. Adjustable feed on the bottom of that. Uh, this one, while the 226 is getting ready to ship here in October, this is more of a January delivery date. And the flagship 328 is going to be more like February of next year. So. So, so one thing I'm not seeing, you have this massive tower, you have all this output here. I'm not seeing a subwoofer commensurate with a tower like this. Does Revel have any plans to offer like a big monster sub again? What's going on with that? Uh, at this point in time, we just recently released the B112V2, which is the sub that's at the end of the range down here. Uh, so that is our top of the line subwoofer at the moment. So uh, there's been discussions, you know, people have asked, hey, if you're going to have a big monster like this, should you have a big subwoofer to go with it? And this is kind of as we, you know, listen to our customers, of course, and see what their requests are. It really, even the center channel was a little surprising on how many people were interested in doing multi-channel yeah. with these. As we, we tended to think of these larger floor standards as being more dedicated to music and guys that had, you know, high-end music rigs. But we're seeing a lot of requests for, hey, I want to have this as an ultimate, you know, multi-channel surround system and still be able to play great music on it. So. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, for, for guys that um, don't quite have the Revel budget, what about JBL? Do you have any new products from JBL? I have a fantastic new range of JBL loudspeakers. I'd love to have you come take a look at. Let's go take a look at JBL. All right, so we're over here at JBL, and I'm seeing these new speakers here. And the first thing that comes to my mind is I'm thinking 3 Series, 7 Series from the JBL Pro side, the active monitors. Those products were so well received in the industry. In fact, like the 306s, I think they're like 200 or 250 bucks a pair are some of the best powered monitors to date. Everybody has said that, and I've heard them, and they're amazing. So I'm looking at this, and I'm kind of thinking of similar kind of waveguide here. Why don't you give us a rundown, Jim, of all these JBL products that you have, and tell me if I'm right in my thinking about how this is based on. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the new JBL HDI series of loudspeakers, and as the name implies, HDIs are high-definition imaging waveguides. Uh, that's a geometry that actually works its way back to the M2 master reference monitor on the pro side. And when we originally developed that, there's a lot of patented Harman technologies in that. That also included the first, what we call the D2 compression driver, which is a dual diaphragm, dual motor, basically two compression drivers that fire in a common phase plug. And on that side, 
we were able to basically, those are products that are found in like Tour Sound and, and uh, some of the large venue products. And then they have, have continued to develop some smaller versions of these that are now found in, in our case, we use them in our JBL synthesis products. So as we've continued to scale these uh, compression driver technologies down, we're utilizing that here in this new series. So this is the first application of a compression driver that's called the 2410H-2. And this is a one inch annular ring diaphragm. It's the same uh, diaphragm material that we use in the larger drivers all the way up to what's found in the 4367. That's got the D2430 30K, which is the dual three inch. This is a single one inch down here. We're obviously at much lower price points than this loudspeaker as well too. So we've got that amazing patented uh, compression driver technology that's in here. So we get all the benefits you would expect from that of ultra low distortion, incredibly high dynamic capability, exceptional accuracy with the single annular ring diaphragm that's in it. And we've mated that to this high definition imaging waveguide geometry. And as you very much pointed out, you know, this is the horn geometry that we're using on all of the new JBL models. And certainly this is a very similar one to what would be found in like the 708. So that's the heart of what this range is. All of the full range models are using that HF uh, design around them. And then we have an equally competent LF section in here. So all of these woofers found in this range are, are very advanced designs. Cast frame, our advanced aluminum matrix cones on them. We got a lot of audiophile type details in them with the symmetrical field motors in them. They got copper caps, they got shorting rings, cast aluminum frames, large voice coils. These are serious woofers that are found in here. And when you get to the subwoofer, um, the copper cap's not in there, obviously, for the frequency that this one's using, uh, but it also has a larger three inch voice coil, and this uses a polyplast cone in here, um, given the subwoofer application of what it's in here. So some very advanced technology in them. The look and the design of the product, we wanted to have something that was a very you know modern contemporary look. So you can see it's a it's a very elegant design. Outside of the flat top, there's really nothing flat on them. Sides, the front, the backs, everything curved. Clean design, no visible fasteners anywhere on it. Magnetically attached grills. And then the finishes that we've done, there's a choice of three finishes that we can have on these. We've got a piano black. That's a gorgeous system that's in the active demo room beside us here. This is a real wood veneer. This is satin gray oak that we've done on this. And then on the other side of the room from us here, we have our satin walnut wood veneer finish. So we've got three choices of what you can do uh, in the finishes on them. So, so question for you is, um Price range starts at 1800 a pair for the bookshelf all the way to 5000 a pair for the tower. Is it the same price for all the finish options or is there a premium? Nope. Same price for all the finishes. Same price. Finish those prices. Okay. Yep. So these look awesome, guys. I mean, JBL technology, for basically borrowed technology from the pro line down to the consumer level. I love the fact that the cabinets are fully radiused. You know, it's not just a typical box that you see. I like that you have all these different finish options. These look like awesome products. You got the center channel over here. Do you want to say anything about the center channel? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, these are amazing loudspeakers. We certainly think for music. If you're putting together a nice two-channel rig, you definitely want to check these things out. But we know there's going to be a lot of people that are looking to do a multi-channel uh, audio for video system. So we have the HDI 4500 as the center channel for the range. This is the exact same compression driver waveguide that is found in the uh, smaller tower in the bookshelf. We use quad five and a quarter inch woofers in here. It is a base reflex design, so we've got dual ports on the back. Um, and of course, if you wanted to plug those, you could. Um, and then on the uh, subwoofer side, of course, we've got the, the 12 inch thousand watt powered subwoofer. One, so. thing want, one thing I wanted to ask you, because I just saw it on this no note here, all four of these woofers are not playing at the same frequency. This is a two and a half way design, right? So you got bass coming out of these, but you have mostly mids coming out of these. Um, you maybe want to explain why you do that? Yeah, so actually, with the exception of the bookshelf, uh, all of these models are two and a half way designs. And so two and a half way network is uh, easy to kind of show here on a floor standard. So we've got three identical sized woofers that are in here. And in a traditional three way loudspeaker, like the Revel speakers that we looked at, we've got a dedicated mid range driver. That is the only thing that that reproduces. In this case, in a two and a half way design, what we're doing is the three identical woofers, the two lower ones are crossed over as you would expect and are doing low frequencies only. The upper driver is also doing mid bass as well as LF functionality. So what we get is we get 
uh, the SD, the, the, the cone area, obviously, of the larger drivers. We get the output capability of it, but we get the benefits of the three-way design and really having only this upper driver is the one that comes up to meet the HF assembly on it. The advantage in the case of a, of a horizontal configured center channel like that using multiple woofers is in a, if that was a two-way design, we'd have lobing off-axis on it, and so the two-and-a-half-way design helps us eliminate some of the lobing that's found in it that way. So. So I just love all the thought that these guys put into their loudspeakers. They actually apply the science that they've done through the NRC and through their own science because they have their own anechoic chambers. And they have guys like Dr. Sean Olive and you know Dr. Floyd Tool from the past. Just some of the sharpest minds in audio producing loudspeakers taking that science and turning it into product. Awesome. I really appreciate this overview you gave us. You've got Revel for the high end. You've got JBL for the more affordable. Got great product choices here, guys. Check out the brands at Harman. If you like this video, please thumb it up. Make sure you subscribe. Share it. That's the only way we're going to get the views is if you guys share it. I appreciate you doing that favor for us. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get access to content before it goes on YouTube. And guys, until next time, keep listening.